we're back. So welcome to part two of building a niche site from scratch. So today we're going to do keyword research and we're going to finish off the topical map because as soon as we get all the keywords we can work out what categories we're going to put in our astron astronomy G section. Uh, and if you notice when I'm building out the niche site I've not talked about hosting, site design or content or anything like that because it's really important to actually build out the site and actually map out where it's going to go before you even start doing all the other stuff like because I am going to continue with this because it, it looks like a decent niche and there's going to be a lot of opportunities within each category uh, but you also want to do this for niche selection so you want to make sure the site you're picking is actually worth jumping into that the keywords are going to be easy to target it's going to be something you want to do so it's worth doing the topical map and planning everything out before you actually even buy the domain and keep going through uh, go through basically the next steps. A lot of people skip this till later on, but it's very important to get it done first, basically. All right, so today we're gonna do keyword research. We're starting on this website. So all I've done, it's the same as before. So I've just put this in SEMrush, and then I've gone to organic research here. And then I'm just gonna export it all to a CSV. Cool, cool, cool. And then I created a keyword master sheet. Do, 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 do. Why is this like this? Okay, this should be in there. So that's just a little bit of code to automatically basically input the keywords across when the when I've picked them to, to be uh, added to the list. So with keyword research, basically all I do is copy all the keywords and chuck them into a massive data set and then just remove the duplicates and filter out for filter out all the stuff what we don't need to look at. Yeah, filter out all the stuff we don't need to look at and then I basically go through and pick through all that okay that's the wrong link oh yeah so okay so I've set that up wrong I need something out uh, so what I'll do is I'll just chuck this URL in here So what I'll do is I'll just speed up this section while I input all the data and then we'll have a massive list and I'll get back to you then. All right. Okay, so we're back. So I've inputted them all apart from the last site because the file's too big. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna remove the duplicates. So we wanna remove the duplicates from all of it and just row A. So let's make sure we get this right. Uh, remove duplicate rows. Data as the header row, and we want it as so. If there's a duplicate and keyword, then it'll get rid of it because we there'll be a lot of duplicates in all the other tabs. So let's see what happens with this. And this is why. I can quite like doing it into a different sheet because as you can see there's a hell of a lot of keywords when you're doing it this way but it's just the easiest way to map out the industry basically okay 
Let's go down. And then I am going to import that final sheet now we've got rid of some of that extra data. So it takes a bit of time, it is a bit of a long process, but from what I've found, it's one of the easiest ways to uh, to fully map out a niche, get all the keywords sorted, and figure out where you want to target. You can find a lot of, well, you, you can always find loads and loads of hidden gems doing it this way. And so that's the way I like to do the keyword research to start out, and then you can always dive in to be a bit more detailed in the future. But for a, for starting a new site, it's the easiest way to do it, in my opinion. Okay, so now we've done that, we want to clear this data up a little bit. So for a lot of stuff, you can just hide the columns. Uh, but for what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete a lot of these because of how big the data set is. You kind of want to delete as much as possible just so it doesn't lag or uh, it doesn't really mess mess up the sheet. Okay. So URL, do, do, do. we'll maybe keep it in. It doesn't really matter too much to me, any of this stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll just hide hide this column for now. Okay, do filter. Let's make the sheet look a little bit better, shall we? Right, so now what we're we going to filter for. So if we look for the best keywords first, let's look for the transactional, the keywords which are basically going to earn as money. Okay, let's just neaten this up a bit. We'll just change this to KD. Okay, so what we're going to do for filtering, let's do keyword difficulty first, extra ones like this, so we'll add these in, under a thousand, we got a hundred, let's do this, so this is pretty much how I do it, I've not actually built a new site in a while and done this method in a while, so this is why I'm kind of going through the process again. So what I'm going to do is I'll just manually go through this and I'll probably do, I'll skip through because you kind of don't really need to see the process. So kind of what I'm looking for is just keywords which kind of catch my eye which we can put in. So mainly like best X for Y sort of keywords. Uh, so I'm filtering keyword difficulties low and then afterwards I, I don't really look at search volume but that's a nice factor to look into. It's mainly keyword difficulty. CPC is quite nice to look at as well. Position, it doesn't really matter too much to me because uh, a lot of these are going to be easier to rank for from what I can gather because of the keyword difficulty. And like the, as you can imagine, like best telescopes are a lot harder to rank for than best telescopes for a solar eclipse. So they're a lot easier to rank for. So these are the sort of keywords I'm going to add to the site regardless of the position or search volume or anything like that. It's just kind of sieving through and trying to find all the keywords which I want to go after first to basically make the content worthwhile because even if you do AI content or anything like that, it still costs money and time and everything. So you want to make sure you're optimizing to get returns and faster returns at that. So these are the sort of keywords to do. So I'm going to manually go through all these and I will skip ahead and catch you guys later. So I'm just doing a quick voiceover while I skip through this. So some things I didn't mention is when you find keywords which aren't kind of relevant, like there's drone keywords in here, 
you just filter by drone and delete those keywords out of the data set and it'll make it a lot easier for filtering through the rest of the content later on. Also if you're unsure of a keyword just google it and then you can check if it's relevant to your niche or if it's just something irrelevant and I always like to make notes if I find topics like for programmatic keywords and then you notice later on I create a new sheet and that's to make to put all like the best sort of keywords into a new sheet just so it doesn't clog up the main sheet just to basically speed it up it makes things a lot quick, quicker and easier right so that took a little while so for this next bit I'm gonna have to do a little bit of explaining because it's gonna take a bit of checking out so you want to check out search intent for the best keywords as well but for adding these review keywords we're gonna kinda of have to do it now because as you can see there's a lot of like branded searches and it's gonna be like lots of different products so what you wanna do is simply just google the keyword and see if the same results come up so if the same results come up you definitely wanna combine it and it looks like it's not so for this keyword it's mainly getting the like roundup reviews and then we've got some of the separate reviews in here but for what I'm gonna do I'm gonna create this as a hub by the look of it so basically like this and include like five or six products instead of doing loads of different separate reviews for each one just because it's gonna take up so much time and it's I can't be bothered with that it's like a depth and breadth tactic so basically I'm gonna go for add the main review and then I'm gonna add the most popular uh, separate telescopes of the brand into this review I'll probably do maybe between five and ten and then in the future if I check on Google search console and I see like this keywords getting loads of impressions and traffic and it's worth make it a separate page for it, then I'll make a separate page and link up to the main hub review. But for now, I'm gonna focus on the main brand and do it as like a best sort of review and just include these rather than doing a separate page for each. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna start going through these keywords now. I'm still obviously sifting through all the data, but I kinda of wanna organize all these best X for Y keywords. So I've just created a new sheet, uh, keywords cat, and I'll probably change this up a little bit. But what I wanna do is get all the telescope keywords. And basically the way I'm kind of doing this is not very organized. But what I'm doing is, so it's going to be slash, let me just copy it in. So slash telescopes and then it'd be slash price and then slash under 1000. So that's kind of how I'm structuring it. So it's going to be... Uh, at a URL level so I'm just making sure I'm getting it right and then for the for say solar eclipse it'll be for solar eclipse like that and then because the telescope mount is more for the accessories rather than um, best X for Y I've just left it separate for now until I kind of work out where I'm gonna put it So this is why you always want to check the keyword because all the keywords that are coming up are beginning keywords. So for this, instead of obviously creating a new page, it's pointless because all the beginner is ranking for it. You want this as a segmentation for one of the products. So one of the products is headings like segmented will be this. And that way you rank for the keyword and it make it more relevant and the page a lot better so we'll put that in the best for beginners best family telescope this would probably be a separate one or added onto the main keyword this one for kids 
kids and children. So it's trying to rank for kids there. So I think we'll do add this in as a separate one and then I'll add that in there. This one for travel I'll definitely be separate as value. Let's have a look if there's enough information. I'd say this would be separate, yeah, best budget. Because it's quite a small niche, that's good, that's separate. Because it's quite a small niche, you're not really going to get too many best sort of keywords. So it's not as good for for this sort of stuff, but you will obviously find gaps still, which is what we're trying to hunt for now. I think I want my main best telescopes page to actually be about that. This would be a question in that topic. Uh, so, if we want the family one, this will probably be go under the kids section rather than a separate page. Yep. So sometimes you can go against Google because sometimes the content is basically not there. So you're actually one of the first people to create that sort of content. But generally, if you add it into the headings you'll kind of rank for that anyway so you don't really need to have to do it unless there's do, 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 unless there's a lot of traffic for that keyword and you think it needs to be a separate page Google doesn't really know what to rank for that you can see it's got loads of different like prices under beginners we got deep space beginner advance kind of changes it doesn't really know what to pick but I'm gonna chuck that into my main topic brand would be separate value we've just done that to see the moon we've done that one under 300 I don't think I they can all go nicely together and link together just putting that in to remind myself for later on. I'm going to go through these. Some of these are going to be actual pages, like this. But a lot of these, uh, a lot of these, what I've put in are just going to be headings or keywords to actually add into the into the post. So I think all of these are actually keywords which I'm going to add into the post. Uh, it's only this one which is actually going to be a page. Uh, but I'm going to put this underneath that. So it's going to go slash telescopes, slash for astrophotography, slash for beginners. So it's nice to mix it up as well and just do a little test and see if it actually works. But for that keyword it does look like it's getting separate results so it's worth testing out. So I thought I'd do a quick voiceover just to finish off the last of this keyword research. So basically I'm just going through all the information keywords, mapping out all the review and information, how many I've got of each category. Um, going through the website to check the search intent to make sure no keywords are going to cannibalize each other. And if they are, it's basically adding one keyword into the other pieces, piece of content. So that's pretty much it for that. So I'm just working out the folders for everything to go to and the total number of articles, which you'll see soon. And that's pretty much it for keyword research. So it's pretty in depth for how I usually do it. I 
quite like just getting the site maps and just finding a few smaller niche sites and copying those to basically kick it off. This way it gets like it encompasses every single site, so you don't really miss out on a lot. But it means you basically have to spend a lot longer sieving through the information. But doing this you find a lot of hidden gems, so it's a good tactic to use. And that's it for this video. So I'm still deciding how to structure these, so Leave a comment below how you kind of want to see the video if you like longer or shorter videos. And in the next one I'm going to be focusing on content. So subscribe for more. Catch you later.